Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And today I want to try to make some links between engineering and architecture and history. I want to talk about flying buttresses. What's a flying buttress? If you've ever seen a cathedral, a big one in Europe, they've got all this stuff on the outside of them. A lot of that stuff is flying buttresses. And here's a picture of a cathedral. And you can see that there's this sort of central building with all these posts and arches and beams and stuff all over the place. What is that? Well, those are flying buttresses. It's easy to think about medieval and renaissance times in Europe and think that because they didn't have any technology that they were stupid. No, these were very clever people. They just didn't have a lot to work with. From an engineering standpoint, one of the things you got to remember is what their building materials were. And they pretty much had two. They had wood and they had stone. That was it. Well, wood is nice. You can, you, you can put it in tension. You can put it in bending. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with wood. But trees only grow about so big. What do you do when you need to make a really big structure? Or you want to make a really big structure like a castle or a cathedral or something? Well, you're going to make it out of stone. Stone has some pretty handy building properties. Its compressive strength is really high. It's very stable. It doesn't care about weather. It lasts approximately forever. But it has one really big problem, and that's that it's essentially useless in anything but compression. You can put it in shear if you have to, but you can't put stone in tension. It doesn't handle tension very well. It's kind of like concrete in that sense. So what do you do when you want to make a really big structure and the building material you're forced to use can only handle compression pretty much? Well, that's why you get these really complicated structures that you see on the cathedrals and, and some of these very old buildings. So there's the background. Let's start drawing some pictures. Let's start drawing some forces and try to understand this from an engineering standpoint. Let's say you want to make a cathedral. Well, what do you want it to look like? I mean, it's just a building, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, it's just a building, but it's also an expression of a lot of other things. And because of that, the people wanted it to be hollow on the inside. They didn't want beams and posts all over the place. They wanted these huge soaring ceilings. They want, if you go into a cathedral, the ceilings are surprisingly high. They're very high. How do you do that with stone when that's all you got? All right, so let's draw a cathedral in cross-section. Here's dirt, and here's what you're looking for, pretty much. You want that, and this distance here can be pretty high. I mean, on this scale, you know, people are like this. This is really high. Now, right now, this wouldn't be very hard, you know, steel beams, blah, blah, it's fine. Well, that's not on the menu back then, so how do you do this? Well, from a statics approximation, this is kind of what they're doing. The joints here, these seams aren't very strong at all, and we can model those as pin joints approximately. Now, this ceiling, this roof, is going to, there's going to be big forces coming down, okay, because this is heavy up here. These are, these are uh, a lot of, sometimes they're wood structures, sometimes they're, they're stone arches and they've got a metal cladding or sometimes even a stone cladding on the outside of them to protect them from the weather. You'll see uh, cathedrals that have uh, copper shielding, it looks like, that the roofs are all green. In fact, here's a picture right now. Boy, that sure looks like a uh, metal roof to me. That thing's heavy. You know, it's held up very nicely, but it's heavy. So. Here's what you start with. Now, because these, are, these joints aren't terribly strong and because none of this stuff can be in bending, this is going to want to move out. Okay? Here's, here's what your deformed shape's going to be. And it's going to collapse. And historically, they may have collapsed. They didn't have any math. They couldn't describe what they wanted to do mathematically. They had to try things. And I'm if you go back in history, it wouldn't surprise me at all if some of these things collapsed early on. All right, that's not going to work. Let's fix this. Hmm. 
Okay, so there's our cathedral again. I want to keep these walls from moving out. Okay, how would you do that? Well, triangles are strong. How about if I did that? That would be great. Problem. What are you going to make these out of? You've only got wood and stone. Well, the woods, you're going to have a hard time making anything that big, especially if it's going to last very long. The mindset of the people building these is they were building for eternity. Cathedrals took many lifetimes to build. People started cathedrals knowing that their great-grandchildren would never see them finished. This was okay. These were people comfortable with the long view of things. You can't separate the engineering problem from the philosophical, social, religious views of what they were doing. They didn't care if this took forever. Right? And they wanted them to last. Well, if you make them out of wood, they're not going to last. So what do you do? Well, let's see. What if you could make a post like this and put another link there like that? That would work. Now this post doesn't really have any bending stiffness. We'll, we'll, in fact, it's, we'll assume it's basically pinned to the ground. Um, all right, that would work. Well, the problem is, as the loads here from the roof try to push these out, that goes into compression, which is exactly what you want, because you're building out of stone. Compression is where it's at. And it's going to try to push this over. Well, how do you get it to not fall over? Well, you make it really heavy so that instead of the reaction forces at the ground being up and down, which is what they would be if the weight of this structural element is negligible, the weight of this structural element is not negligible. You don't get to do that. What you get is really down and a little bit of down, but that's still in compression. Now we're in business. In fact, you'll see these things, these posts, made really heavy. And you'll, you'll see you know, big decorative structures on top of them. They were there for aesthetics, but a lot of times those things were there just to add more weight. Well, even so, this might still fall over. Well, if one's good, two must be better. So let's just make another one. All right, that's how this works. And you can make as many of those as you want until you finally get to the ground. You can put another one down there if you wanted. Okay, so that's what you get. Now, this place in here is all open. There's nothing in it. You can look up, you can do things like you can have Michelangelo paint frescoes up there, paint, put paintings up there if you want. You can have all these huge lofty structures because this was supposed to be an inspirational space. This was supposed to remind you of God. And you can't do that easily in some little cramped thing. So they wanted these huge soaring open spaces. They had no technology. They were clever, resourceful, and they didn't care if it took a while. So this is what they started building. And I'm gonna do the center line there. The structures are basically symmetric. So from an engineering point of view, we only need to model half of it. The other half looks exactly the same as this. It's just mirrored over. These things right here, you know what those are called? Those are called flying buttresses. Okay? And they're flying, meaning they're, 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 the, the name suggests that they're, they're out here. They've got these, these open arches going to them. And they're, these arches are out in space. They're flying. A um, couple other things to notice about this. These things right here are not straight. They are curved. Here's one of the neat things about stone and arches. If you're clever, you can make an arch. I'm going to go over here and make an arch that all the stones, everything in it, is in compression. There's nothing in tension anywhere. In fact, the, the, the perfect arch is called a catenary. Okay. If you've seen the St. Louis Arch, that's a catenary. Catenaries, when they're built this way, all the components are in compression only. Stone loves to be in compression. It's great in compression. If you uh, want to build a structure that's going to last a long time and the only thing you've got is stone, make it look like this. It'll last approximately forever if you do a good job. Now here's a picture of one of my favorite structures ever. 
This is the remains of a Roman aqueduct in a place in France called Pont du Gard. This structure is made out of stone, stacked stones. It may have concrete in them. That was one of uh, Rome's contributions to the engineering world was concrete. And the point is, the stuff they made this thing out of is useless in anything but compression. And so they made a structure where basically everything is in compression. If you want to know how well it's held up, this structure was made in the first century uh, in the Common Era. So this structure is around 2,000 years old, maybe 1,900 years old, and it's holding up okay. It's still there, parts of it anyway. This is what you can do with stone if you're clever. So let's get back to the flying buttress problem. If you make these arches or segments of arches, these get to be in compression too. Right? And you'll notice the flying buttresses, these things are curved. They're sections out of an arch. Let's close with a more modern example. This one's not medieval. This is actually fairly modern. It's La Sagrada Familia, designed by Antonio Gaudi. Uh, he spent his whole life working on this. Um, it's not done even now, even though uh, Gaudi is no longer with us. And it may eventually be finished. It's this very organic, very curved, very uh, odd-looking structure. But it's designed using some of these kinds of architectural features. So there you have it. I told you in another video, statics is the most useful class ever. And we've just been able to learn how medieval cathedrals were built and how you can explain their construction using basic ideas of statics. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.